This lesson is centered around a grade 2 class and teaching multiplication. At this stage of learning the students are in the concrete operational stage and so this lesson I used concrete objects to support and enhance their learning. In this lesson I had students working in groups of two or three so that they could share their learning experience and learn from their peers, promoting active engagement and students were allowed to move to the floor. Manipulatives were used to support students in understanding this multiplication concept, providing a very hands-on experience. The students have previously learnt counting in fives when counting around clocks. They progressed on to learning the fives times tables, which is usually more challenging for students to grasp. In this lesson I gave each group a, sh a set of flashcards with the five times tables written on them. For example, five times two, five times seven, and so on. Using coloured counters, students group the counters into the bags to represent the flashcard. For example, one of the focus questions I asked was, how many groups of five do you need to make five times three? And how many does that make altogether? On a piece of paper in their notebooks, students wrote the multiplication sum and drew circles to represent the groupings. I walked around to all the groups monitoring and observing, rather than spoon feeding so that the students could make mistakes learn from each other and discover using concrete materials. Guidance was provided when required. Asking students questions as I wandered around the groups provided evidence of understanding and students had the opportunity of discussing and sharing the learning rather than being passive participants. Students could capture their multiplication groupings also using the iPad to show me if I missed seeing some group demonstrations. These photos can then be used later for students to upload into the app Draw and Tell where they can provide an oral commentary of how they have made five groups of two, for example. When teaching the time to a grade two class, I decided to start with the hour hand. I chose to start the task with the hour hand because it was the least complex. The fact that a single hand pointing to a single number as a concept of time seemed a great place to start. First, we discussed time in general, the time it takes to get dressed in the morning and the time it takes to get to school. This helped recognise that while we didn't feel time, it was passing without notice. This led to a discussion of o'clock and how it signifies a specific time of day when said, new, said after a numerical identifier. Next we identified the numbers from 1 to 12 and that the hour hand indicates the hour of the time only, while the minute hand indicates how much of that hour had passed. For a first lesson touching on a half and second a quarter and so on. After this discussion, the children could independently w complete worksheets that showed a clock face with only an hour hand. Once they had been completed, we discussed the minute hand, and then when it was on the three, one quarter of the hour had passed, on the six, half of the hour had passed, and nine represented a quarter remaining in the hour. This gradual release of responsibility enabled the children to then go on to a worksheet that was similar to the last only matching via multiple choice the time on the clock to times such as a quarter past and half past. I recognised that this lesson would not have been possible if we hadn't discussed fractions the week before and learnt to count in fives, tens and multiplications the previous day. That was the precursor to telling the time. <coughs> this lesson was a great opportunity to remind the students of the behaviour rewards chart due to the fact that they will be working independently on worksheets. Whilst one-size-fits-all style education seemed rather archaic, this was still the behaviour model that was implemented in the school. I personally don't support such a system, but it seems quite popular amongst schools to identify which children perform better than others and to let the class know who is the worst offenders and who is a model student, regardless of how awful it is. In this lesson, I offered a bronze star to every student that completed the sheet and received a 50% and a gold star to those that had achieved 100%. <clears throat> this type of incentivized learning encourages children to reach their full potential. Obviously this style of positive reinforcement does not meet the criteria of all students. Some, some students displayed absolute desperation to achieve the gold standard and others had a look of what do I need a sticker for? Luckily another form of reinforcing stimuli I pulled out of my magic hat was a suggestion for free time on the oval at the end of the day. I use this type of reward to strengthen the behaviour response of the class as a group, as I put the responsibility in the hands of all the students. I suggested that if all the students received 50% or more on both worksheets that they could have the free time, rather than leave the positive outcome only to the individual. The class could make the effort as a group, whilst depending on others and also supporting and encouraging each other to accomplish their goal. <coughs> 